Hi guys, welcome to Boost Boy Fabrications. Uh, sorry there's not been a video for a long time, but I've been busy, as you can tell. Uh, with lockdown, I'm a critical worker. So, unfortunately, things have been slow. Not been able to do as many videos as I want, but that's life, and that's it, mate, at the end of the day. Uh, what I want to talk about today is I am building a... 1.6 Ford Fiesta EcoBoost tubular manifold. Uh, my own design, equal length. Yes, it will be similar to other manifolds out there because of the components I'm using, but uh, I don't think it's a copy. It's what I believe is a true equal length. Uh, every cylinder has been measured to determine the correct volume. So I know it is a true equal length manifold. It will be made from 304 stainless with 1.5 mil walls, 1.5 inch diameter headers, so it's 38.1 mil, uh, a four to one 25 degree merge collector, 10mm laser cut flanges, exhaust flange and turbo flange, uh, to my spec, which is nothing special really, it's just, you know, what I want to use personally. It will have a inch and 75 outlet with a ported turbo flange to ensure a smooth transition, and also the turbo flange will be in the original position so basically this turbo I'm calling it an S280 turbo turbo techniques but it will fit any standard frame turbo so your X47Rs your Revo 330s and burn the turbos and anything else basically I use a standard location it will be fully TIG welded uh, back purged, if anyone don't know what back purging is, it's where you fill the chamber full of gas and that will take all the oxygen away so you get as, as good a weld on the inside of the pipe as you do on the outside of the pipe that'll ensure strength and there's no like uh, they call it sugaring on the back of the weld which could potentially drop off and go in your turbo and stuff so you know, it's going to be the best quality I can make it like I've always tried to do with my manifolds. Now, I don't know whether there's going to be any gains to be had with the manifold, whether it's going to be... I can't imagine it being massive. It's going to be, you know, probably, I would say, 8 to 10 horsepower if I'm lucky, because it's only a 1.6 litre engine. I do believe it will produce more horsepower if you go to a bigger turbo. The problem is with that is it's to fit a standard frame turbo. So unless it's a special one-off that I can make for you, it will basically be limited. Like Turbo Technics are apparently bringing the S290 out, which is still in the standard location. So I believe it will coming to its own then it would actually make more horsepower than it will do on an s280 but that's all fine and dandy but this is for the s280 so you know i'm not gonna say oh yeah it's gonna do this it's gonna do that because it might not do anything yet a lot of tubular manifolds <coughs> from what people have told me reliable sources have said that you actually lose power because of the size of the headers and the length of the primaries. But uh, this, I know for a fact that Simpson won't produce, for the MJ performance, that that produces horsepower. And that's a cracking bit of kit, to be fair. You know, I'd be more than happy to buy one of them. But I believe this is my own version. You know, people are going to say it's going to look similar, but when you're using a proper 4 to 1 merge collector, the room constraints you've got, you've got no chance of fitting that any other way. 
The only way you could do it is if you fabricate an angle collector, which I personally don't like using. There's nothing wrong with them. I just don't like using them. And from the research I've done on burns in America, that make most collectors, they say between 15 and 25 degrees is the optimal flow. So that's why I tend to use them. And they're a lot more expensive as well, you know. So I'm... Um, I could be cutting me own through and making a lot more money, but I believe they're the best and that's what I use and it's as simple as that basically. You know, different different rules for different meals. So for me, I like using them. Other people like fabricating themselves, there's nothing wrong with that, and that's perfectly fine. You know, it's not a competition, there's no animosity from, from me or towards anybody or hopefully they're not towards me. But you know, some people can be very clicky about stuff. That, that's that's not me. I'm not, I don't I don't give a shit what other people think or say. So it's uh, yeah. I'm gonna show you around it in a minute and uh, see what you think. It's just taped up at the minute, as in I've literally just tested all the headers. How I've measured them, I have filled. I broke each primary off, taped it up. Uh, filled it full of water, which sounds a bit, oh fucking hell, yeah, what are you doing, filling it full of water, filled it full of water, tipped it all into a measuring jug, and that's going to be my volume, and it's literally 10 fluid ounces, it gives you something to work off, uh, you know, you don't need, in all honesty mate, you don't need thousands of pounds worth of equipment to tell you that you know computer aided design to tell you that oh it's going to flow this much it's going to flow that much yeah you know formula one cars and teams like that fair enough but i'm working out of a garage so <laughs> from home so to ensure every one of mine's equal length i normally use sand i fill them full of sand put them in a measuring jug and then make sure each primer is equal length or equal volume should I say and that will ensure an equal length manifold it can be a pain in the fucking arse and I mean a right pain as I'll explain when I show you around the manifold in a minute uh, you know yes you can waste a lot of materials but once you've got your your design if it's going to be repeatable you know, you need to make a jig, and that's what I've done. So, hopefully, there's going to be a few people interested. I've already had a few people knocking on the door, sort of, asking when it's going to be done. Like I said, unfortunately, I'm a critical worker. I've got a kid, so I have to work around as and when I can, basically, which is weekends and stuff. Uh, I'll be doing a batch, and it's a first-come, first-served basis. It's as simple as that. There will be no... Oh, can I have one? You know, can I pay more? It'll be this is a price, uh, and once they've gone, they've gone until I get time to do another batch. Unfortunately, I've just been put because of the country's on lockdown again. I've been put on afternoons, so I might get a bit of time in the day to help me along, but I can't see it happening to be fair. Uh, so it's just what it is right let me show you around the manifold right guys this is it equal length primary 1.6 eco boost manifold as you can see the first two primaries yeah it looks a bit like a Simpsons one they've used a tighter curve and bent off a bit more I've used a more radius bend uh, from the measurements I've got out of my car, because I'm running an S280, uh, it should fit, no problems. I have made it quite shallow. From the top of the heat shield, of the flange there, to the top of the heat shield is 150. This is around about 150 maybe 160 mil so it's going to be no, it should be no higher than the original 
heat shield on the original manifold. Sitting backwards from the face of the flange to the back of the manifold there is 150. I think we have got 180, maybe 200 deep. So it's going to be quite tight to the head as well. So possibly I might be making a heat shield to cover all the pipes at the back. So it's just like a plated heat shield and not you've got to box it in. Because it stands up upright, as you can see, it will need a different crossover pipe. I'm not happy with the crossover pipe coming over the top of the manifold and basically all the heat, especially off the tubular manifold, hitting the crossover pipe, which is going to just warm all your inlet temps. So it'll be running up the side. I imagine up the side, over the front of the front of the engine bay, basically, and just see what we can get in. If there was a different way of doing it, I, I might even possibly look at getting one that goes from up over down the side, and if we can swing it down behind the driver's headlight, try and retain the RGT. Uh, induction kit but RGT did I say RGT or R RTG RTG sorry it's me being a thick twat again the RTG RTG induction kit I'll say it in one word uh, and do a reverse one I don't know the only problem with that is then we've got to link the air inlet sensor we've got to make an extension cable so that's going to be another ball ache and take all your vacuum pipes to it. So, let's have a look around it. The uh, headers go through the flange face. So that pipe hits the back of the jig. So that'll be getting purged around the back, welded around the front, and I might put some strengthening plates on, I'm not sure yet. I've never really done them before, so I might not do them. As you can see, they're off it there. The two primary headers, let me just tilt that back. So the two, as you can see, they're spot on. You know, there's no, no different there. With the four to one motor collector, it is super tight. Super tight. I can see why other companies do it a different way. You will not be able to get that collector on. That collector will not be on springs. It will be solid welded all the way around. So it's a it's a one-off manifold basically. You know, you can use it on plenty of different turbo setups, but you will not be able to pull that off and swap it out. You'll be lucky you can, you can even get it out. Never mind about swapping it out. So you've got them you've got the two primers there. We've got the two primers at the back, like you said, look, you know, you can see it's absolutely spot on. Which then, sweep round the back, and down, I'll just show you from the side, sweep round and round, you know, it is a bit loose at the minute, you know, you can move stuff around, clearly, I'm going to try and give everything a gap. So there's no rattling. And the same on the other side. You know, as you can see that's a bit tighter there, but you know you've got that move, you've got that movement. It's all gonna be tacked up first. Checked in the car. And see what we've done. That's the merge from the merge collector to the turbo flange. Now the hole I've had machined is 35mm, a standard hole. That pipe is 42 mil. So what's going to happen is there's going to be an angled hole that will be uh, hand ported. So the transition from the end of this pipe there, where it's TIG welded around, into the flange will be a tapered edge. 
to ensure flow. Because someone's told me the S280 flat, uh, hole, turbo hole, is 37 mil. So I've had them done 35, so it needs opening out slightly. And it will have a ported hole, again, just to make it as smooth as possible. Uh, as you can see, call it the welding, merge collector, everything's spot on. Nothing, uh, nothing done cheap and cheerful. You know, everyone's got their own ways and their own designs. I'm not knocking any of them, like I've said before. But uh, each to their own. So, like I said, that's it. So if there's anybody interested, you can visit my Facebook page, which is Boost Boy Fabrications. This is a new product. Hopefully it will be coming with the induction pipe as well. So it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive than, say, a Puma Speed manifold. But you will get the kit. So you'll get the manifold, maybe a heat shield plate. I need to look at that on my car first. Uh, and develop it and also the uh, crossover pipe that needs to definitely be sorted that's the, the next main priority really uh, I'll do another video when it's all welded up uh, show you the quality of it and see how we get on so that's it for this video uh, hope you've enjoyed it a little walk around in the manifold and show you what you know, show you what's happening basically. And if anyone's interested, like I said, you know, please get in contact and I'll keep you updated on my Facebook page to, to let you know when it's getting released.